Coming up on Spiritual Authority. How could he let me lose my mind? After all the things that I've done for him, for you, you let me lose my mind. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life. Starting now. In the name of Jesus. Bishop George Bluma, and welcome to Spiritual Authority. You're looking at me, right? The new and improved Bishop George Bluma, 170 pounds lighter. I'm taking you today with me on the road. We're going to Atlanta. I'm going to minister from this powerful message. You will find it this time in the dark. I want you to understand that sometimes light will find you in the darkest of darkest places. Prepare yourself for healing, deliverance, and breakthrough is going to be your portion in a few minutes. Come on, let's go into the service, and I'll be back to minister to you in a few moments. Prozac. I didn't borrow it from anybody. It was prescribed to me a year and a half ago when I had a nervous breakdown. I'm sitting because when I begin to tell the story, it always causes me somewhat to lose a footing. Because I have a little bit of issue with, with God in the crisis. And that is simply this. How could he let me lose my mind? After all the things that I've done for him, for you, you let me lose my mind. And there's some other medications in here that, that I brought tonight. It's a little purple pill that was for when I would have these twitches. My eyes would move and my lips would twitch. And my hands would move involuntarily like this as if I was having an attack of Parkinson's disease of some sort. And I noticed that it would only happen when no one was around. And the minute people came around, it would stop. The thing that bothered me about it, Bishop, was I saw God and Lucifer talking together. And it bothered me because I told God who I was. But I knew Lucifer knew what I was going to become. And I couldn't understand God talking to Lucifer. What are they talking about? And I think a part of that drove me crazy too. Got in the car and I was driving from my house to church. Something came over me and I continued to drive and drive and drive and drive until suddenly when I came to myself, I was in Charlotte, North Carolina around the mall area. I came to myself and it dawned on me that I had 
driven two hours and 22 minutes without even stopping or thinking. And I called my trusted assistant and I said to him, how do you get back from Charlotte to Durham? He said to me, where are you at, Bishop? I said, don't ask me where I'm at. Just answer my question. How do you get from Charlotte back to Durham? And he started to give me, you get on 77 and you uh, make your way from 77 to, to, to 85. And if you're coming straight, you go 85. And if you're coming to the church, you do 40. And I said, well, where's 77? I couldn't, I couldn't regulate. I couldn't get this thing together because I had forgotten to take my pill. I'm sorry, I know this is not a great Tuesday night message. But somewhere along the line, we've all forgotten that Satan is after us because of what we did to him for him. Gene is what I said to him. How do you get back to Durham? He said, sir, 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 where are you? I said, I'm in Charlotte and I don't know how to get back to Durham. He then said to me, do you want me to come and get you? I said, Negro, please, <laughs> come and get me. All I want you to do is tell me how to get, do you want me to come and get you? Where are you right this moment? Do you want me to come and get you? Let's be honest about this. In all of my life, in all of my years of living, I've never had anybody to ask me, do you want me to come and get you? I always had to go and get them, but nobody. Yet nobody said they was coming to get me. I didn't even know how to receive it. Come and get me. Wow. I had snapped. Shaking out of the presence of people. Twitching. The spirits that I had delivered other people from had somehow figured out a way to attach themselves to me. I am now bound by what I loosed people from. And then I found out, don't tell church people. If you ever want deliverance, don't tell them. Bishop, I had a nervous breakdown. The great apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher, preacher, George Bloomer, general of warfare, had a nervous breakdown. And the therapist told me, you're not going to receive deliverance until you're able to actually open up your mouth and say, I had a breakdown. I'm sleeping one night and I wake up. I know it's a dream and in my dream, I'm walking into Bethel Family Worship Center. Standing at the top of the steps is a young man. He has a book bag on. I have a book bag on my back also, but my book bag is very, very heavy. It's pulling me back. It's extremely heavy. His is light. He turns and he looks at me and he says, how you doing, Bishop? And I said, fine. How are you doing? He says, okay. I says, I noticed that your book bag is the same as my book bag. He said, would you like to see what's in my book bag? I said, yes. He takes his book bag off, he zips it open, open it up. I look inside his book bag and in his book bag is Bethel Family Worship Center. I look back up at him, I said, what in the world are you doing? Carrying my church and my ministry around. When I asked him that question, his face disappeared and just the light shined at me. I then knew in the dream that I was in front of an angel. He said, what's in your bag? 
I reached over and pulled the heavy bag off, flipped it over, zipped it open, and inside of it was a ripped, torn marriage covenant. A rattle broke in half. There was cancer and tuberculosis. There was voices shooting out of the bag. A rusty spoon. Mortgages in foreclosure. Repossessed cars. In the bag, dirt and rocks. I looked down and I looked up at him. And he looked at me and he said, this is all of the stuff that you have delivered people from. Why are you still carrying it? I had a nervous breakdown. Still to come on Spiritual Authority. Yes, I'm shaking the pills and I'm walking around as a testimony. You tried to destroy me, but you couldn't do it. In fact, the truth of the matter is that this bottle is supposed to be empty. I was supposed to take every single pill in this bottle, but somewhere between my first pill and my 18th pill, I found out that I serve a God who is a mind regulator. He will restore your mind. God has given me insight into 2012 and 2013. That's why we're having the School of the Prophets. Join Bishop George G. Bloomer for School of the Prophets, January 2nd through the 6th, 2012, at Bethel Family Worship Center in Durham, North Carolina. I believe that this is a missing link in the body of Christ, and we need to learn. We need to study to show ourselves approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. Joining Bishop Bloomer will be guest speakers, Bishop E. Bernard Jordan, Prophet Brian J. Mosley, Dr. Belinda Scott, Prophet D.J. Senegal, and Prophetess Janet Floyd. Experience a time of enlightenment, instruction, and impartation at the School of the Prophets. For more information, call 1-800-211-7079. School of the Prophets, they're coming from everywhere. Storms that come to make you strong sometimes make you weak first. If anyone were to tell me that I would go through a nervous breakdown, that I would regress to the point that um, I would almost forget God, I would have to say to you that you were crazy, but it happened to me and God delivered me. And that's why I'm sharing this message with you this morning. Don't give up. You're moments away from your breakthrough. Do not take your own life. The spiritual oppression that you're under is about to lift. This is your date and moment with destiny. God is going to turn it around for you. In fact, let's go back into the service one more time because you really, really need to receive this miracle. I'll be back to pray for you in Jesus' name. The scripture tonight tells us a phenomenal story. The story is a true one. The story is that Jesus says to his disciples, he constrains them to get into a boat and to go over to the other side of the lake. They make the attempt to go over. The Bible says that they go down to the sea while Jesus goes up to the mountain. The mountain represents stability. It represents heavenly places. It represents tranquility. They go down to the sea. The sea, in Revelation chapter number 18, the Bible says the sea represents people and nations. And anytime you launch out in people and nations, you better have an anchor because people are very fickle and fake. They'll smile in your face all the time they want to take your place. The backstabbers, they will stab you in your back while smiling in your face. They go down to the sea. Remember the principle. Anytime you take your eyes off of Jesus, your first step is down. Anytime you take your eyes off of Jesus, your first step is down. Say it. Anytime you take your eyes off of Jesus, your first step is down. They go down to the sea. Jesus goes up into the mountains because Jesus now wants to view the disciples from where he is. Remember this principle. Jesus sees you from where you are. And he is committed to coming to where you are. 
You don't have to see him as long as he sees you. Jesus sees you from where he is. One more time. He sees you from where he is. Yes. And the Bible tells us that the wind was contrary. And by reason of a great squall, a, a storm came down the lake and placed the ship in great jeopardy. The first watch, no problem. The second watch, no problem. The third watch, no problem. But in the fourth watch of the night, the saints, the, the disciples are about to faint because of fear. And the text says, in the fourth watch of the night comes Jesus walking on the water. The fourth watch from 3 to 6 a.m. comes Jesus walking on the water in the darkest part of the night comes Jesus walking on the water and the disciples see a form but can't make out what it is so the disciples now says it's a ghost but Jesus speaks he says be of good cheer fear not it is I and out of the eleven only one hears the voice of Jesus the, the least likely one hears the voice of Jesus. It's not John, the one who Jesus loves, that hears the voice. It's Peter, the one who cusses and fights. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. That hears and recognizes the voice of God and says, with doubt, says, bid me to come if you would. And Jesus says, come. And on one word, he steps over the rail and starts walking on the water to Jesus. And while he's walking on the water to Jesus, the, vo the Bible says that the winds are boisterous. So the winds are carrying voices. There's words in the wind. And so, glory be to God, folks who did not have enough faith and encourage courage to, to step out the boat and to walk to Jesus, these individuals are standing on the boat saying, how in the world are you walking on water? I want you to understand that people who don't like you will fight you even though they see that you're doing the miraculous. Touch somebody and say, I'm about to do the miraculous in my life. I don't hear you. Say it again. I'm about to do the miraculous in my life. This is, how, this is how my nervous breakdown was. My nervous breakdown was dark. My nervous break breakdown was dreary. My nervous breakdown was black. And it felt like I was in a vertigo, like the room was spinning all of the time. But it would only happen in the night time. It's where I understood the scriptures. The Bible says that they brought one to Jesus who had a spirit of a lunatic, a lunatic. A lunatic comes from that, that Latin word luna, where you get madness of the moon, moon madness. Doctors tell us that when the moon is in full bloom, women who are pregnant goes to the hospital thinking that it's their time. They have false contractions. The moon manipulates them and makes them think it's their time when it's really, really not their time. There are individuals who are around us, glory be to God, who is being manipulated by demonic forces that are telling you that it's your time when it's really, really not your time. I wish I was preaching to somebody in this place. Making you think that it is something when it really, really isn't. The friends of mine told me, said, Bloomer, you know, you got to keep that a secret. You can't tell anybody that you was at Duke Hospital. You can't tell anybody that you're taking those pills. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. I found out that your greatest deliverance is in looking the devil in the face and says, you knocked me down, but I got back up again. Nashakataba. And no weapon that is formed against me is going to prosper and yes, I'm shaking the pills, and I'm walking around as a testimony. You tried to destroy me, but you couldn't do it. In fact, the truth of the matter is that this bottle is supposed to be empty. I was supposed to take every single pill in this body, but in this bottle, but somewhere between my first pill and my 18th pill, I found out that I serve a God who is a mind regulator. He will restore your mind. Ah. Touch somebody say, thank God for my mind. Thank God for my mind. Yeah. You can bring the lights up for a quick, quick second. Thank the Lord for my mind. Touch somebody say, my mind, my mind. He tried to make me lose my mind. 
but it was not possible. He couldn't do it. I'm no longer resting in your encouragement. I'm resting in the presence and in the power of God. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. He tried to make me forget who lifted me up. He tried to make me forget who brought me out. He tried to make me forget who turned it for me. Yeah. 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 And I know some of you in here, you don't understand, but the demons that's been hiding out in this building done started reaching for their hats and coats. Nobody gets married so that their marriage ends up in divorce. Nobody buys a car so that the repo man comes and picks it up. Who purchases a house so that your house ends up in foreclosure? Nobody has children, so your children are snatched from you and awarded to the state. In life, things happen. And when they happen, you got to know that you serve a God who can take your lunar experience and turn it into a testimony. And a testimony is not thanking the Lord for your life, health, and strength, food on the table, or clothes on your back. A testimony is an undeniable experience that you've had with God in the past to sustain you for any present or futuristical difficulties. A testimony is data and proof that the God that brought you out yesterday will turn around and do it again. Shake somebody and tell them, I'm coming out, I'm coming out. I had to go through the storm that I went through. I had to go through the breakdown. Accusations and criticisms are the final stage before spiritual promotion. You can always tell how blessed you're going to be tomorrow by how much hell you're going through right now. Ah, look at your neighbor say, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes you got to go crazy in order to find your sanity. Wow, we have really run out of time for today, but there's so much of this message left, and I would love to get this whole message in its totality in your hand. Write us, call us, the announcer is going to come and share with you how we can make this happen. And in a few moments, I'll be back to pray with you. Receive a fresh start with Bishop Bloomer's latest message. You will find it, this time in the dark. The ripped torn marriage covenant, a rattle broke in half. There was cancer and tuberculosis. There was voices shooting out of the bag. A rusty spoon, mortgages in foreclosure, repossessed cars. I looked down and I looked up at him and he looked at me and he said, this is all of the stuff that you have delivered people from. Why are you still carrying it? Receive your copy of You Will Find It, this time in the dark, on CD or DVD. When you write to us, visit our website or call 1-800-211-7079. Get yours today. God has given me insight into 2012 and 2013. That's why we're having the School of the Prophets. Join Bishop George G. Bloomer for School of the Prophets, January 2nd through the 6th, 2012, at Bethel Family Worship Center in Durham, North Carolina. I believe that this is a missing link in the body of Christ, and we need to learn. We need to study to show ourselves approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. Joining Bishop Bloomer will be guest speakers, Bishop E. Bernard Jordan, Prophet Brian J. Mosley, Dr. Belinda Scott, Prophet DJ Senegal, and Prophetess Janet Floyd. Experience a time of enlightenment, instruction, and impartation at the School of the Prophets. For more information, call 1-800-211-7079. School of the Prophets, they're coming from everywhere. Join Bishop George G. Bloomer at any of these life-changing events. January 2nd through the 6th in Durham, North Carolina at Bethel Family Worship Center for School of the Prophets. For more information, call 919-688-1565. January 12th through the 14th in Gardena, California at City of Refuge. For more information, call 310-516-1433. 
January 25th in Chicago, Illinois at Rehoboth Apostolic Worship Center. For more information, call 773-239-3032. February 17th and 18th in Uniondale, New York at the Uniondale Marriott Convention Center Hotel for the RAW Conference. For more information, call 718-525-9043. I grew up under authorities that didn't nurture me but abused me. I have to grow into trusting them as an authority. So my um, idea or opinion of authority is um, damaged. And when the spiritual leader uh, doesn't lead you to God but rather continues to lead you to himself, then your view of God is that man or that woman that is standing bef before you and not God himself. It's amazing how a person won't tell their father or their mother that dad or uncle such, such and such abused me, but would uh, go on the Mari Povich show and share with the entire world. And I wanna help you get back on target so that you can live a balanced life with Jesus. Write us today and I'll get one of these to you. Authority abuse, breaking the spirit of toxic leadership. God wants you to walk free. I'm Bishop George Bloomer, and I'm coming to Atlanta, Life Church International, Saturday nights, 6 o'clock. That's enough time for you to get in and worship God and get out, get home, and get that chicken out of the crock pot. Enough time to worship, rejoice in the Lord, and still make it to your favorite movie. And get out early enough to get down to the courthouse and bail him out of jail. And take the kids to Chuck E. Cheese. Bless you. Father, today we thank you so much for your healing virtues, that there is yet a bomb in Gilead and there's healing for the sin-sick soul. We come against every satanic assassin and every satanic attack against your people, and we command that they walk in liberty, freedom, and breakthrough. In Jesus' name, those of you who are in need of a savior, say, Lord, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Receive me as your child. I promise you, if you prayed that prayer, you just got born again. When you call us, we'll help you find a church in your area to be a real blessing to you. Bye-bye for today and continue to watch Spiritual Authority. Next week on Spiritual Authority. I come to tell you, if you've ever been knocked down, that's a good place to be. But getting up is better. Touch your neighbor saying, if you've ever been knocked down, and you get back up, you learn knockdown strategies. Ah! Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't ready yet, you ain't ready yet. You ain't ready yet, you ain't ready yet. You gotta stop worrying about glory be to God, what the devil is saying and what the devil is trying to do. And you gotta focus on this one thing that God is going to bring me out of every single storm and crisis that I am in. And let me share something with you. If George Bloomer can snap, crackle, and pop, you can too. But if God can bring me back, he can bring you back too.